namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma Samatha and Vipassana, right? Yes. Samatha is internal serenity of the mind. Vipassana is described as a higher wisdom of insight into phenomena. So we are learning that. <coughs> Last week, uh, we talked about Samatha. Based on the Sota, <coughs> Actually, I just cited one, one soda, Tatiya Samadhi soda. That, uh, the, uh, the soda, the that soda on concentration, right? Samadhi. <coughs> Based on that soda, we talk about uh, the meaning of Samatha. So, actually, uh, giving, citing Pali what? So samadhi me, uh, actually samatha me serenity. So we have to develop serenity. So we have to stand and sit on the object of meditation. So when we want to develop sama, uh, samadhi or when we want to develop serenity of the mind, internal serenity of the mind, so we have to stand on the meditation object. In other words, we have to sit on the meditation object. As I said, so when we are starting, start to meditate in meditations, so we cannot stand on the, on, on the meditation object or we cannot sit on that. So slowly, just like a small baby, right? So we have to develop, we have to trying to stand on the meditation object. When we are meditating in breath and breathing meditation, right? So our mind must be standing on the breathing meditation object. Just like that, we have to stand on that. We have to sit on that. And also, so we have to bring our mind to the medita meditation object. And we have to place our mind to the meditation object. So that is a uh, very authentic interpretation of samatha, right? Samatha. So that is samatha. <coughs> so actually, uh, we have to develop uh, samatha based on pojana, right? Based on pojana. So samatha. Uh, some, uh, we personally is uh, interpret as a higher wisdom, higher wisdom of insight into phenomena. Actually, phenomena means sankara, right? We have learned many times in previous. So today also we will learn about sankara. So how sankara condition phenomena embodied in Buddhist teachings. Without understanding a wa, uh, the word Sankara, so we do not understand about Vipassana, right? Today we will also learn about Sankara again. <coughs> so the commentary said that, so we have to see condition phenomena, Sankara, five aggregate or mind and body 
mind and matter or uh, six sense space right so we have to see them as the impermanent suffering and non self right so that is called vipassana today also we will continue to learn about vipassana i think everyone heard of this one sabbe sankara anicchati yatha panyaya prasati athane pendati dukkhe isa mago visodhiya so when we when we go to uh um the wake we always we, we always chant this one so especially in the Buddhist countries so when somebody die especially at the funeral so at the end of the, at the end of the day we chant three verses sabbe sankara anicchati yatha bhanyaya prasati athane bendati dukkhe isa mako visodhiya it is from tamapra as well as from tiragara <coughs> Actually, as you know, the Tiragara was uh, so many verses. So these are, how to say, the opinion or um, or the great Tiras who has already attained enlightenment. So before they die, so they express their feeling and their experiences. So that is called Tiragara. All the all the verses are composed. in the as a uh, as a poem as a poem so is one of them you know uh, in konenya venerable konenya the first monk who became the first monk right then he expresses the uh, he talk he explain his life also his experiences so these three verses were taken from uh tirakara is taught by Venerable Konenya, right? Here you can see the word Sankara, Sabbe Sankara, Anicchati. I know you know, right? All condition, uh, phenomena, are impermanent. Yatha Panyaya Pasati Panyaya, with the wisdom, not normal wisdom, insight wisdom, with Pasati seeing. on looking at so you look at condition all the condition phenomena with the inside wisdom so that is called vipassana right atha nibbendati dukkhe isa mako visodhiya this translation here sankara me condition phenomena so we have learned last week it it can be either five aggregates or either mind and matter or either six sense basis basis so here we use condition phenomena so all condition phenomena are impermanent so when one sees this with the inside wisdom so sees with the inside wisdom that is called vipassana here there's no we instead of we we we, we have a panya right panyaya pasati so when weary or suffering so when became uh disappointed with the five aggregate so this is the path to purity this is the path to nibbana so when we understand when we see with the inside wisdom all condition phenomena are impermanent So this will be the path to nibbana the path to happiness right so here what i want to say is sankara very important condition phenomena panyaya <coughs> pasati so if you can see uh condition phenomena as impermanent that will be vipassana right another one sappe sankara dukkha all condition phenomena are suffering so if we see that because all condition phenomena are impermanent therefore they are suffering so even you are enjoying luxurious things so they are impermanent so therefore they are suffering 
So actually, we are looking at from the top-down view, right? Not from the border. <laughs> of course, in the in the uh, if we look at just from the border, they are of course they are pleasant. But when we look at from the neighbor neighbor point of view, so all condition phenomena, whether pleasant or unpleasant, whether uh, good or bad, all these are suffering. When somebody see such nature with the inside wisdom. So this will be the path to purity. This is second second verse, right? Here the word sankara. The third one, we do not use sankara. Sapi dhamma anatati dita panyaya pasati atane bendati toke isa mago visodia. Here dhamma all phenomena not conditioned phenomena is also included nibbana also included there right nibbana is not safe nibbana is not a type of form it exists but it is unconditioned right it is unconditioned so therefore to include nibbana so we do not use sankara so if we use Sape Sankara Natati. That means it implies that Nibbana has self or certain type of certain type of entity. So that means um, it became like a um, super soul in Hinduism. As you know in Hinduism, so they believe that sentient beings even uh, trees and mountains, they have soul, right? They have soul. So when people die, so that, uh, I want to say, a small soul reunite with the super soul, right? So actually, when uh, we talk about Sepe, Sankara, and Natati, that means, so we are, we are talking that Nibbana also, Nibbana also a kind of entity. Actually, Nibbana is not. It exists. It's a type of bliss that we have to experience with the mind. It's not a place, right? Not a place. So therefore, Sapi, Dhamma, Anatati. Sometimes we can use Sapi, uh, we can, you know, instead of Dhamma, we can use as a Dhatu. Dhatu and uh, dhamma are sometimes very similar. Similar. So actually, the dhatu me interest in nature, interest in nature. So therefore, sometimes we use nibbana dhatu, right? So sabbe dhamma natali. All phenomena are without self. Even nibbana, there is no self. No self, no permanent entity. Everything is impermanent, right? Without self. So when one sees this with the inside wisdom, when we are suffering. So here, um Atta Nepe entity toke. It's not literal translation. Uh, oh yeah, yeah is it, this is a literal translation. Um K R Norman translated as a so when one understands such a nature, one becomes indifferent to pains, indifferent to pain and suffering. So there's actually uh, we are immune to suffering or pain. So when we understand these natures, so all phenomena, all phenomena, uh, all conditioned phenomena, impermanent suffering. And all phenomena are without self, non self, without non self. So if we understand that we are immune to suffering or pain, immune, right? We we have a resistance, resistance to uh, to suffering, any type of suffering, right? <coughs> Here, what I want to say, panyaya. So we see those phenomena 
with the inside wisdom. So that is called vipassana, right? Today I will explain about vipassana based on two sotas. Actually, these are very uh, subtle sotas. So I think we have to try to understand. <coughs> Another one. So why the first discourse was being delivered? Actually, this is from Dhammachaka Bodhana Soda. So the Soda said that why the first discourse was being delivered? So the death free, stainless vision of the Dharma, the eyes of the Dharma, Dhammachaka, arose in the venerable corning and this. As you know, the Bora is playing four noble truths. The Bora delivered four noble truths. So, Venerable Kodinya attained Sotapana, uh, Sotapana Wood at the first time. So, when he became Sotapana, the Pali Kana mentioned that this one. So, what is Sotapana? How he became Sotapana? This the sentence. Whatever is subject to arising, is all subject to cessation. Whoever becomes Sotapana, whether a king or poor people or a man or lady body, so Palikana only mentioned these lines. Yankenchi, Samuriya Dhamman, Sapanta, Nidora Dhamman. He also gained the word Dhamma. So he also, uh, as I said last week, so we were we will learn about uh, the word Dhamma in detail when we learn um, Dhamma Nupasana. So the meaning is, wherever it's subject to arising, is all subject to cessation. Our body arises. So therefore, we have our body is the nature, uh, the body has the nature of arising. So therefore, it has the nature of cessation. We were born that we were dying, right? Somebody, somebody became popular. Then, then, one day, how do you say? Uh, that popularity way. Yeah, faded away, faded away, right? So if, as the actor or actresses, if they do not understand that reality, so they became depressed, right? When they encounter with the reality. So therefore, we must understand wherever it is subject to arising, all five aggregate, right? All five aggregate or mental or material phenomena, they have the nature arising. Therefore, they were seized one day. So if we understand that, we are immune to pain and suffering, right? So we understand the reality. So the one who became Sotapanami, the one who understand this nature, the nature of impermanence, right? So here also we can see Vipassana, the nature of arising, the, na the nature of cessation, right? So this is also a type of Vipassana. Another one, this is also very important one, is from Mahaprinibbana Soda. Handa dhani bhikkhwe amandiya miyo vaya dhamma sankhara apamadena sampadena. This is the last verse of the Buddha. Very important one. As you know, the Buddha start with the Four Noble Truth, right? So Venerable Koninya became Sotapanna. Sotapanna. Then if he became Sotapanna, he realized the nature of five aggregate, the nature of condition phenomena, right? As the impermanence. So here also the Buddha stress, as it the last one. The Buddha reminded to the monks, now monks, I declare to you all conditioned phenomena, sankhara, 
Sankara are of the nature of decay. Here, the nature means Dharma. Dharma means the nature, not the teaching, not the, um, maybe we can also say phenomena, but here, uh, the word nature will be better. The nature of decay, so all conditioned phenomena of the nature of decay, strive on diligently with the mindfulness. Here we can see strive on diligently. That means right effect, right? We have to make all the effort. And with the mindfulness, this concentration, sati, right? Samasati. So here, sankara are impermanence. That is very important because um, as you know, the Bora himself realized and he himself know it. So therefore, so when uh, it's very on powerful, his speech is very powerful, right? For those who understand the nature of fire aggregate, so their speeches are very powerful. So when, when you listen to the meditation teachers, you can, you can feel it. Some meditation teachers, they have all experience. So therefore, their speeches are very powerful. Some are not experienced. They are just talking from the book, just like me. <laughs> so therefore, sometimes it's not very powerful. So anyway, I understand that uh, you, you, you all have been learning with me for a long time. So you understand that. <laughs> you, how to say? So and therefore, I think uh, here, what I want to say is, the Bora, he himself know it. This is the most important, the, the most important teachings in Buddhism, right? Buddhism. So therefore, he, uh, he speech as the last word. So as you know, um, <coughs> actually, I'm, if you want to know more about uh, the less the less accidents of the Buddha, occasions of the Buddha, you can go to Mahaprinibbana Sota. It's very interesting sotas. <coughs> so I'm thinking that maybe uh, if we do not finish meditation subject this year, we will continue next year. Then after that, we will learn uh, the most important sotas, uh, you know, to, to, uh, to finish uh, next year, right, next year. Then uh, the other year, we will change to another topic. So here, sankara, condition phenomena, so the nature or decay, that means impermanence, right? So therefore, the Buddha stressed that. So um, some scholar is just for knowledge. Some, some, some scholar argue that, as you know, the Abhidharma, we have uh, three, um, how, to say, how to say, three timing. Arises, and uh, exists for a while, then disappear, right? Upatibhina, opara, Titi and Banga, right? So then something will arise, then it will stop for a while, according to Abhidharma, then will disappear again. But some scholars do not agree on that, because in Sotas, there's only two arising and falling away. Arising and falling away. So when we read the soda, you will find that even um, um, Venerable Cunningham said that, right? So something that is the nature of arising has the nature of cessation. Arising and cessation, only two, right? Only two. So therefore, some scholar against the idea of Abhidharma. So um, some scholar from Abhidharma, of course they have a uh, they have, how to say, the answer. 
the answer. So arises, stop for a while. Just like we throw a stone on the, on the air, right? The moment the stone stays at the top, it's very short. Lifespan is very short, then we fall down. Just like that, arises, stop for a while, then disappear, right? But here, what I want to highlight is here, the Buddha do not say arising here in Mahabharata Nibbana Soda. He just highlight cessation, impermanence. He just highlight this one, the nature of DK, Vaya Dhamma, Vaya Me, decay or impermanence or cessation. The Buddha do not explain about arising or stopping for a while. He just highlight only one. The nature of decay, right? So this is very important one. So therefore the people, the country, the buildings, our popularities, our success, our business arises and disappear. If we understand that nature, and we will be immune eh, to suffering. Okay, that is a um, from our Prinibana Soda. <coughs> so this also type of Vipassana, the Buddha explained about Vipassana. If we understand, if we see Sankara and also arising and passing away, so that is a Vipassana. So here we have learned Brani Yenga Soda, five criteria of meditator. So when you want to learn, when you want to become a meditator, for those who want to attain higher spiritual achievement, just like a jhanas, a mega and phala, right? So we must have five criteria. So this one is the last one, the fifth one. Possessing the wisdom that descends arising and passing away. Arising and passing away. Here also, right? Arising and passing away. Which is noble, penetrative and lead to complete distraction of suffering. Complete distraction of suffering may lead to Nepal. So this also the wisdom here me we persona insight, insight wisdom, right? Insight wisdom me knowing the, the arising and passing, the nature of arising and passing away. That is we persona. So the commentary said that wisdom or insight, which is capable of penetrating, rising, follow five aggregates. Here, five aggregate condition phenomena, right? So if you understand at any time, if you understand at any time, rising fall of five aggregate, rising fall of your mind, your body, your success, your business, everything, that will be vipassana, right? That will be vipassana. Okay, so now we we'll go to the last one. Oh, no, uh, this is from commentary. As you know, the commentary they interpret the meaning of certain what based on the sotas, right? Based on the soda. Here also, so this interpretation is in according with many sotas, right? Nechari was saying up. Vividena Akarena Pasaditi Vipassana. So when we learn uh, most of the subject, actually, uh, I don't know in, uh, in other country, in Myanmar, especially in Myanmar, so we have to learn commentary explanations. So therefore, if the commentary explanation is wrong, we are also wrong. <laughs> so therefore, I think sometimes we have a uh, very wrong interpretation. Sometimes we have a wrong interpretation because they come from commentary, right? So we do not, 
we forgot to go back to Bali Khan and so here this is a commentary explanation seeing things in various aspects such as impermanence so this is a definition of vipassana in the commentary of the first abhidhamma book tamasengani so seeing or looking at things everything that me here they may condition phenomena in various as aspects such as impermanence suffering non self um and many other things right many other we have a um uh, 40 meditation object right a mantra is basically seven uh recollection so if you can see that that will be we persona so this is what bande agachaita said that so actually we can divide we persona into two we and persona so we can be actually i prefer this one various way we we day na actually in commentary we we day na various persona me see but asma akacheda he prefer distant distant distancing distant sorry distant what is distant sorry very clear very specific specific actually it's not literal translation so literal translation should be various so we have to see things in various aspect just like impermanence suffering non self etc right so that will be vipassana but distinct seeing that 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 will be um how to say not literal translation okay so that is a vipassana from commentary and also from what pandi asma kachida said that right but here pandi akachida he he were explain regarding with the samatha right so actually we have learned that <coughs> so the last one so the main purpose of vipassana is to eradicate the cause of suffering second noble truth so the second noble truth the cause of suffering is three type of craving so let's see we have learned three type of craving right so we just go back to dependent origination so by doing so we will be able to attain liberation from all type of suffering so liberation from all type of suffering is reset right so if we eradicate three type of craving then we can remove all type of suffering right so that is the, the main purpose of we persona and also the, we we can call it the main purpose of samatha samatha we persona so the main text of we persona is to see the real nature of condition phenomena so we have to see right we have to use our inside wisdom to see the real nature of condition phenomena that is a, the main text of the vipassana right so to here i explain the definition of vipassana so now we are going to the sotas a very beautiful sota so that explain about how we can apply vipassana so if we land this sota so we will also know what is vipassana right especially it is from majjhima nikaya sota number 131 sota number 131 patika ratas patika ratas sota 
So before we read, I want to explain what is Bhattikarata Soda. Bhattikarata. Bhattikarata can divide into three. Bhatta means excellent or good or auspicious. Eka means one. Rata means night. So therefore, Bhikkhu Bori translated as a single excellent night. So this is a literal translation of Pali. Bhatta means excellent. Eka means single. Ratami night. This is a lit literal translation of Big Body. So actually, um, we do not find the word Patikarata. So only we can find in Majamanikaya. Only uh, three sodas. Three, uh, following two soda and this one. Ananda Patikarata Soda. So Venerable Ananda explained about Patikarata and Mahakachayana Patikarata Soda with the three sodas with the word Patikarata. Also another one, Loma Sakankiya Patikarata Soda. Then we have four, right? We have four sotas with the name of Patekarata. So actually, uh, uh, the teaching is the same. The teaching is the same. So if we learn one sota, it's more than enough. More than enough. <coughs> a single excellent night is a literal translation. Sunny Saropeku. So how you how you pronounce this one? How you pronounce? Uh, no 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 I mean it. Sun is the wrong. Tan is the wrong. Tan is the wrong. Not tan is. I mean tan is the wrong. Tan is the wrong. Very good. Okay, it's not very important. <laughs> <laughs> because I do not know how to pronounce. <laughs> Some people pronounce as a tansinaro. Actually, is it tansinaro? Is I think it may not be correct. So I think it should be tanisaro. Tanisaro beiku. Actually, he is a, a British American uh, who was ordained as a, in in Thailand, and he also translated a lot of. A lot of a lot of books. So he's a one of the uh, one of the very famous translator of the Bali Canon. And he translated as a an auspicious day, an auspicious day. Actually, he take it as a he take it Patekarada as a Bali idiom. Bali idiom. Actually, uh, the way he See, it's really beautiful. Even Beku Bori have to listen his idea, right? Before um, uh, Yanamoli Teda, he, uh, he, tr he used another title for this soda. But Beku Bori changed as a, an excellent, a single excellent night. So listening the suggestion made by Sunny Sarah Beku, right? So the reason is really beautiful. So there is a tendency in the Pali Canon to speak of a 24 hour period for day and night as a night. In Pali Canon, because as you know, Pali Canon is written or memorized and recorded in Pali, which is based, rooted in India. We can call it. I think um, we can call it. It is the ancient, ancient, uh, ancient idea, not Asian, ancient, ancient, 
Asian idea, Asia, Asia. So, um, Asian idea, an Indian concept. So when they want to talk about 24 hours, day and night, they use the word red, red, right? Mostly, mostly. So therefore, here, red me, it can be, it is 24 hour period for day and night, right? But according to Indian concept, they use the word red. It refers to 24 hours period, right? So this would be natural for a society that use a lunar calendar. As you know, the Asian country, so we use lunar calendar. So that calendar mark the passage of time by the phases of the moon, right? So therefore it is natural that we use 24 hour night and day as a red, as a night, right? As a night. But as a Western people, they use solar calendar. So therefore, they normally, uh, they normally call the same period for time, 24 hours of period for time, as a day, right? As a day. So it will take one day to finish, right? Like this. So this is according to Western idea. So therefore, so he, <coughs> so I have chosen to render the Pali idiom. He used it as a Pali idiom into his English equivalent, an auspiciate, an auspiciate. Actually, I think it is really beautiful because we have four sotas with the name of Batikarata. So that means an auspiciate. How you create an auspiciate? How you create an auspiciate? So this sort of talk about that. How we, we should live to become our day auspicious, right? So actually, I will use this one, an auspiciate. Okay, let's read. Let's read the Sota. As advisor, on one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Sawati in Jita's room. Ananda Pindu comes, there he addressed the Bhikkhu's task. Bhikkhu's, venerable sir, he replied. The Blessed One said to him, Bhikkhu's, I shall issue the summary and exposition of one who has had a single excellent mind. Listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, Venerable Sir, the Bhikkhus replied. The Blessed One said thus. So this is actually, uh, we are going to read insight, Vipassana. So these verses explain about Vipassana, right? So when Uncle Leon read, so please listen carefully, right? This is a, what the Vipassana is, okay? okay. Let not a person revive the past, or on the future build his hopes, for the past has been left behind, and the future has not been reached. Instead, with inside, let him see each presently a risen stage. Let him know that and be sure of it, invincibly unshakable. Today, the effort must be made. Tomorrow, then, may come. Who knows? No bargain with mortality can keep him and his thoughts away. But one who dwells thus ardently, relentlessly, by day, by night. It is he, the peaceful sage, has said, who has had a single excellent night. Okay, thank you. So if we are living, so what the Soda said, it will be on our special day. It will be on our special days. So as you know, we have learned one Soda with the name of um, Good Morning, right? 
I do still remember. Oh, 2014. <laughs> we learned about good morning, right? Open our soda. Actually, in that soda, the Buddha said that if we refrain from ten causes of unwholesome deed, that will be a good morning. If you stay refraining from ten causes of unwholesome deed in the afternoon, that will be a good afternoon. In the evening, like that, that will be a good evening, right? Good evening. So it is called actually Bhikkhu Bari USA Auspicious Day. Actually, uh, the name of the soda is Bhopana. Morning, morning, Bhopana. Okay? Uh, and I think in, we have in this soda, in the this soda book, we have one soda called Bhopana soda. So in that soda, we, you also can learn how you make your day auspicious. Or how you are make your day make a good day, right? So in that soda, if you see the translation of that soda, uh, and then it is a normal way of creating an auspicious day. But this one is higher one because based on vipassana, right? Based on vipassana. This is the translation of Big Body. Let not a person revive the past. Beautiful, really beautiful, right? In Pali also, beautiful. In, in English also, beautiful. <laughs> Let not a person revive the past. Normally, we are always reviving our past, right? Therefore, we have a lot of problems. Yesterday, you hear unpleasant songs and you revive it, you create a lot of problem, right? So therefore, it is not vipassana. Vipassana, just look at the present moment, right? <clears throat> Let not a person revive the past, do not revive the past. Or on the future, bid his hope. Normally we have a lot of expectations. We, hope, we, we have a lot of hopes, right? Hopes. So therefore, when our expectation doesn't meet, problem, <laughs> problem again, right? So therefore, suffering stems from craving, craving to the past and craving to the, uh, to the future. For the past has been left behind and the future has not been re reached. Really beautiful sodas. So I talk about the nature of the past and the future, right? <coughs> Here, Tani Tarop Beku translated. Actually, this is a literal translation, I will say. So this one will be a literal translation. You shouldn't chase after the best. Chase after the best. And place expectations on the future. We have a lot of expectations for the futures. One day I must become a very rich man, a rich businessman, a very successful people like this, right? But of course we can expect. But we, we have the way how to expect, right? Then I will explain. You can go back to the past. But there is only two ways. There's only two ways that you can go back to the past. Otherwise, then you are creating a lot of problem, right? So you shouldn't chase after the past. Or place expectation on the future. This is only zero. So I think this, this one will be a little translation. <coughs> So here, we best now. Instead, instead of chasing after the best, instead of placing our expectation on the futures, instead, with the with insight, let him see. With the insight, let him see. 
each presently arisen state. Yeah, the state of phenomena is the dharma. Pichopanin cha yo dharma. Tata, tata, vipassati. This is a vipassana. It's talking about vipassana. Instead, with the insight, let him see, seeing. You know, vipassana. With the insight, with the insight, let him see. That means vipassana. Each presently arisen state. Each me, tata, tata. Presently arisen state, pichopanin cha yodama. So that is called vipassana. So our mind do not go back to the past. Our mind do not yearn for the future. We just stay in the present moment. Not just stay in. It's not vipassana. It's a, with the insight, you have to see. So the phenomena happening right now happening right now so that is called vipassana right so let him know that and be sure of it so make sure that your mind is in the present moment and make sure that your mind is looking at and seeing at the phenomena happening right now that will be vipassana. Normally, we always go back to the past, right? Normally, we yearn for the future. We forgot to live in the present moment. Therefore, we are not practicing vipassana. <coughs> Let him know that and be sure of it. So we have to make sure that our mind is our mind is living the present moment, invincibly and unshakably. So, defilements, anger or hatred or jealousy or craving, any type of defilement shouldn't be shaken to your mind. So, mind must be in the present moment. Do not go back to the past. Do not yearn for the future. Just stay in the present moment. Just like that, you just enjoy Today, <laughs> do not think about problem in the past, right? Do not worry about the future as well, right? So that will be vipassana. Very simple way, right? So simple that we cannot see it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I like uh, <coughs> translation of Sunny Sero Beiku. The way he translates really beautiful. So here, ta 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 ta, he translates this way. Wherever quality, he used the quality about the Dharma, wherever quality is present, you clearly see. Actually, he translated as a we, as a clearly. Is a uh, similar to Bandi Akacheda, right? Distinct. Clearly see, right there, right there. If your mind is uh, thinking something right now, you just know it. Your, your mind, you are thinking something, right? If you hear something, just know it, you are here. If you are eating, if you are standing, if you are sitting, just know it. Right there, right there. Very good, beautiful one. Ta 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 ta. He translated, literally translated. Actually, he, this soda is really important for meditation. Therefore, many, many people translated this soda by different interpretation. So another one, Bande Bhikkhu Nyanananda. I think he's from uh, Sri Lanka, I think. And he translated this one, the same one. But, yeah, but me, uh, we shouldn't, chase after the past. We shouldn't yearn for the future. But that which is present, he descends with the insight as and when it comes. 
S and win that translation of data data. It's not liberal translation. So wherever it may come, wherever you feel, wherever you encounter, just observe it. Just see it with the inside wisdom. Right? Just understand it. Uh, the arising of those phenomena or cessation of those phenomena. So if you have anger, you notice, you see your mind that you have anger, right? Arising of anger. Then if you see it, that anger will disappear. And disappearance of the anger. So that will be vipassana. So therefore, we can apply, we can practice vipassana at any time. Everywhere, right? Everywhere. So here, descends with the inside as a when it comes. So that is called vipassana. I hope we have learned a lot. It will be getting complicated or getting clear. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Actually, uh, I want to make sure that what is vipassana, right? Using the sotas. So it is important, not from the commentary, not from other, other people said. It is what the soda said, right? What the soda said. Okay, so uh, I think next one will be going back to the past. We'll go, we'll go and read one passage. Okay, Angelia. <coughs> Does one revive the past? One is just be like that. I had such material form in the past. One is just be like that. I had such feeling in the past. I had such perception in the past. I had such formation in the past. I had such consciousness in the past. That is how one revives the past. And how we boost does one not revive the past? One does not necessarily be like that, thinking, I had such material form in the past. One does not necessarily be like that, thinking, I had such feeling in the past. I had such perception in the past. I had such formations in the past. I had such consciousness in the past. That is how one does not apply the past. Okay, thank you. These two lines are very important. So this is called vipassana. That's called vipassana. So we, we do not revise the past. So the Buddha has given the way in way of by aggregate. By aggregate. <coughs> As you know, normally we always think that less two year time, 10 years ago, 50 years ago, my body was stay strong, stay beautiful. <laughs> now those beauty, those strains are gone, right? So we normally revise our past. Those revision will be the cause of our problem. Then our fear, and depression came in, right? So therefore, we don't have to go back to the past, right? Go back to the past. So, this regarding with the form, right? And people normally, uh, normally have, you know, most people normally have uh, a craving or delight, so childhood memory. So they always say that, I just want to go back to my child, child time, right? Always say that. So in Burma, we have one, one very famous song. Um, uh, this disappearance of uh, uh, the airport of Nibbana. <laughs> the uh, disappearance of the airport of Nibbana. So actually the son said that now he have a lot of problem. He went to go back to childhood time. So in those time, no worry, 
no sadness. Everything is free. The song said that. So when I was young, of course, I like, I like it. So when I listen to that song, I feel a certain type of feeling. I recollect my child memory. So when I start to teach a bit Emma, I start to analyze. Actually, this is wrong. We are just reviving our past. We are just going back to the past. It is not right. It is not right. So we have to stay in the present moment, right? Present moment. So actually, uh, I always said that I am very lucky. So when I stay in my village, very happy. <coughs> then when I was 12 years old, I moved to Mandalay for further study. Then I am very happy. <laughs> very happy. Then I stayed there for 11 years. I am very happy in Mandalay. But for education, I have to move to Yangon. But I don't want to move Mandalay. Mandalay is really very, um, a very good place for a monk. Very free. Also a lot of friends. Then when I moved to Yangon, about three months, I forgot Mandalay. <laughs> 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 I start to enjoy uh, you know, Yangon. Then I stayed there for four years. Then I'm learning English and teaching to the novices. And then um, at the age of 27, I went to Sri Lanka for master's degree. Then of course, at the first time, not happy, about two or three men. <coughs> so later on, I think that so Sri Lanka will be the best country the best country in my life. So I started to think that. Then I stayed there four years. I'm happy there. Then I came here. <laughs> now I started to think that Singapore is the best country. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing is I, I place myself in the deep forest. Then I visualize myself. I am very happy in the forest too. Because I used to live in the present moment. In the present moment. So there is two places that I do not, uh, that I feel lazy, that I do not like. So the other is another small town in uh, Upper Parma. So when I finish uh, the material degree, so one of my teachers uh, called me and and told me to teach the small novices. So I, uh, I promised I would stay there for uh, three months. So I'm not happy. Small talk. I'm not happy. Then uh, my teacher gave me a lot of, how to say, expectations and a lot of expectations and he gave me such a one, such one like this. Actually, I'm not happy. Then I move, move on. So when I start, uh, start to stay in Yangon, then I do not like that monasteries. A lot of restrictions, no freedom. Therefore, I move to another monastery. Only two places. So if I'm not happy, I move. <laughs> but I, I stay where I like. So actually, mostly, I like the places where I stay. So yeah, this is very important, I think it's very important concept. So we must stay in the present moment. No need to revive the past in my child memory. No need to revive my memory in Yangon or Mandalay or memory in Sri Lanka. Just stay in the present moment. Right? For anyone, for everyone, for everyone. Normally we are reviving all the time, reviving the past. So when we see pleasant things, then we have craving. And when we see unpleasant things, we have anger, jealousy, like this, right? So we are reviving the past. So this will be the cause of suffering. It is the craving is the cause of suffering, right? The cause of suffering. So therefore, it is important to stay in the present moment. So here, the Soda said that 
So we shouldn't revive the past. This is my form, right? When I was young, I used to be very handsome, very beautiful, like this, right? We only revive in the past. Then feeling, regarding with the feeling. So let's see, I am very happy. <laughs> I have a good feeling, right? Then I revise my feeling. The mind perception. So when I was in Sri Lanka, I have a good perception, like this. So reviving the past. And mental volition, right? Mental volition, sankara, and vijnana. So here, I, uh, when, when, we, uh, when we learn about Chaita Nupasana, so I will analyze the word Chaita, the word Vijnana, the word Mana, the word, you know, like all these terms. Because I mean, it, it is important to know, to, to know about what is Vijnana, what is Chaita, what is Chaita Sika, right? So I think when we go Chaita Nupasana, then I will go in detail. For now, so we used to revive the past. The past me, the five aggregate that we enjoy or that we do not like in the past. So we always, uh, we always go back to the past. But you can go back to the past. There's only two method. Only two method <laughs> that you can go back to the past. But this soda prefer second one, second method. This soda, according to this soda, so only second, second method. Number one, so one thing, I had such material form in the past. Ten years ago, I used to be very handsome, right? I used to be very energetic and very powerful. So what do you think? Revive the past. So even though we think like this, does not find delight in that thought. Delight me, not happiness. Is it? If you are uh, by thinking what you have done in the past, if you feel happy, it's okay. But delight me, a type of craving. Nandi, Nandi Raga Sahagata in uh, Dhammachaka Bodhana Soda. The Buddha said that Nandi Raga. So the word Raga and Nandi are the same together, right? Put together. Delight or craving in that thought. So you can go back to the past. You can think about everything that you experienced in the past. You can go back. But do not find delight or do not attach to those five aggregates in the past. So that is one way, right? That's very important. The second one, one does not go back to the past to find the light in it by thinking such a thought. So number two, this is a, what the soda said. We shouldn't go back to, to the past. We shouldn't chase after the past, right? We shouldn't yearn for the future. Just stay in the present moment. So when you stay in the present moment, you see and you uh, you see phenomena, all the things, uh, all the things clearly with the inside wisdom, right? Inside wisdom. So that will be we pass enough. So I think uh, here, according to this soda, we pass enough staying in the present moment, right? Staying in the present moment. This soda, according to this soda, right? This one? This one? Go back? Actually, uh, it's a good question. As you know, in uh, Second Noble Truth, we have craving, right? Tana. 
So actually, when we learn dependent origination, we have learned that one particular bus, uh, Suki Dokan Batayati. Sorry, Suki. Actually, the, uh, the meaning of the soda is, uh, the, the meaning of the bus is, so when we like, when we have pleasant feeling, we have attachment or craving or greed. We we'll say greed, right? We have a greed. So when we have unpleasant things, we long for, we yearn for another things. We want to stop it. Suppose we have a problem. So actually we don't want it. We want to stop it. We, ha we, ha we hate that problem or that diseases. We long for another thing. That is a type of craving, right? So here also, according to this soda, this soda use the word delight, right? Delight. Actually here, delight actually means, of course, a type of greed. No. Hatred, right? I think we must understand that uh, uh, hatred also, we shouldn't revive the hatred also. But of course, this soda doesn't talk about hatred. But when we go back to Udina um, Sanyoda, regarding with the feeling, this causes regarding with the feeling, so we have a three type of feeling, right? Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral feeling, right? And the next soda, we have to learn three level feeling. So actually, when we have a pleasant feeling, we chase after it, right? Chase after it. And also, sometimes when we have unpleasant feeling, we also go back to the, to the past, right? To the past. It is called in Pali, Patika Nudhya. Patika Nudhya. Patika means um, very strong hatred. Anusia me tendency. So we have a tendency uh, or hatred. So when you normally, uh, you, we, we normally remember the people who fight it when we are very young, right? Who are rife in your class. We normally remember them. It is called Patika Anusia because we go back to the past. But we remember that, so they have done something bad to me. Then we go back to the past. So therefore, normally we do not remember those who are not good to us. Ah, oh, sorry. Um, we normally remember only two people. The people who are very good to you, and the people who are very bad to you. <laughs> good people, when you remember good people, when you go back to the past, uh, you know, remember them. So that will lead to, that might lead to craving, right? Craving or greed. So when you remember the people who are very bad to you, who treat you unfairly, then that will lead to fatigue and nausea, hatred, right? Hatred. So actually the soda just talk about delight. Delight me, of course, it, it, it inclined to Greed, I would say greed, or craving, right? Okay, thank you. So I think uh, when, when, when we learn about three type of craving, I think you uh, please just go back to three type of craving, right? It's very important. <coughs> okay, so here, two type of mindfulness. We have two type of mindfulness according to this soda. Actually, we have, we have many soda reference, but I just choose two sodas. It is from Andrea Sanyoda. It is a discourses which are connected to faculties, talking about faculties. So according to these sodas, we have two type of mindfulness. The first one is the ability to remember and to recollect what was done in the past and what was said long ago. So that is number one. So therefore, 
we can have mindfulness to the best as well, right? To the best. But we shouldn't cling to, to the best. Number one. The number two, the ability to drag contemplating for establishment, establishment of mindfulness, for foundations of mindfulness. That is called staying in the present moment. So when you are recollecting your uh, things that are connected with the body, that will be Kaya Nupasana, right? So actually our, our mindfulness should be in the present moment. So therefore, meditation can be both, you know, looking at in the past, also stay in the present moment, right? According to this order. <coughs> so in, uh, what I want to highlight is we can go back to the past, right? But when we go back to the past, we, our mind should be free from craving, three types of craving. Actually, even though uh, what I uh, three type of craving me, it including hatred as well, loba, dosa, moha, everything, right? So when we learn about mindfulness, we will go in detail with the reference to the sotas, right? Then I want to share this one. It's a very beautiful soda as well. So the name of the soda is Arrhenia soda. It's called forest. So one of the devata, one of the deities who is living in the forest, and he see many monks are staying underneath the, underneath the trees and practicing meditations. In the morning, they go to Vinapada. They go for Vinapada. Then they come back and they eat. So they eat one day a meal, only one meal a day, one meal a day. So they, after that, they practice meditation because of samadhi, serenity. So they are, because of internal serenity of the, uh, the mind, so their body became very, their body and their, uh, their complexion became very serene and very calm. So therefore, uh, he wants to know why their complexions are serene and calm and beautiful or handsome. Then he went to the Buddha and he asked this question. Those who dwell deep in the forest, peaceful, leading holy life, eating but a single meal a day, why is their complexion is so serene. The deity, one of the deities, right? So therefore, uh, some preacher, some preacher always said that if you want to be kind, if you want to be a beautiful or handsome person, you have to follow this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way, right? The way how you maintain your complexion. Then the Buddha answer two verses. The first one, they do not sorrow over the past. And the Buddha said that. Those men do not sorrow over the past. Actually, they do not revive their past. Nor do they hunger for future. They do not have, they do not long for the future. So actually, after they come back and they eat it, then they meditate. They do not. Uh, they do not have any worry for tomorrow. Just stay in the present moment, right? They maintain themselves with what is present. So this line is very important. Actually, maintain, sustain. They, sus they sustain themselves with uh, with what is present with what they have. Whether they have a good me or bad me, whether they have a good food or bad food, whether they have a good place or bad place, they do not worry. Just they, they are satisfied. They are content with what they have, right? 
Therefore, hence, their complexion is so serene. This is the way how you can maintain your beauty. <laughs> so number one, do not sorrow over the past. Number one, very important. Number two, do not hunger for the future. Also, you have to be content with what you have. With your belongings, with your success, with your popularity, business, everything. With your beauty as well, right? None of beauty is a, how to say, appearance, right? Appearance. Appearance. <coughs> So, therefore, their complexion is so serene, the Buddha said that. So the main line is here. They stay in the present moment. Actually, actually what the Buddha said is the same thing. The same thing. But the way he said is different. So when we learn the next sota, you will know it. Actually, he's talking about not to create craving not to have craving so normally we have a lot of craving to the past right to the future and we forgot to live in the present moment right so therefore what the buddha said is the same thing but the way he expressed is different then through hankering for the future and through sorrowing over the past fools foolish people Drying up and wither away, like a green reed cut on. <laughs> Only three things you have to follow. Do not revive the past. Do not go back to the past. Do not, um, do not long for the future. Just stay in the present moment. So present moment me, content with what you have. Right? Actually, if we just look at superficial level, it, it seems like uh, the bodies are, how to say, the bodies are naive and passive, right? Passive. Actually, it's talking about how we should live, how we should live. So that is, actually, the Buddha is not talking about, not to think about the future. Here, the Buddha is not talking about to go back to the past, not to go back to the past. Here, not to sorrow over the past. That is in actually in Abhidharma, we call it kokocha, right? Remorse, kokocha, remorse or regret. That is a type of anusandhi, right? Okay, so let's go to the next one. Midday. So this one is very philosophical and very important. If you understand this soda, you will understand much more about Vipassana. <coughs> Actually, uh, it was the occasion that many other men are sitting together. And one of the men raised the question. It was said, friends, by the blessed one in the Parayana, in the question of material. Question of material. Actually, this verse is from Parayana, Parayana Vega. As you know, the Parayana is very famous, how to say, verses in Bali Kana in ancient time, not right now. Right now, I think people follow easy, easy sotas, just like a Mangala soda, right? Actually, these are very philosophical uh, questions and answers. As you know, there was a, um, Hamid, one of the Hamids, very famous one, uh, in the uh, southern part of India, southern part of India. Uh, the name of the river is the uh, I think Maritime. Maritime. I forgot the name of the river. So 
he's staying with a lot of followers. Uh, he is regarded as a saint as well as a very profound, you know, inter intellect. So he heard that the Bora appear in uh, northern India. So he knows that he is a real Bora. But he doesn't want to go to he doesn't want to go and uh, meet with the Bora because he's a very uh, I want to say great master in those areas. So therefore he doesn't he doesn't want to become a follower or a certain teacher. <coughs> Actually he wants to listen teachings of the Bora. Therefore he sent his pupils, sixty of them. So they question to the Bora and the Bora answer. So these are uh, these are known as Parayana. Parami Nepara. Parami the other show. Actually the literal translation is the other show. So as you know, uh, we are living uh, uh, this side or the river and the other show is called Para. Nibbana is compared as a, the other show, right? So we have to cross the river. The river of Sansara. <laughs> Actually, those seemingly will lead to misinterpretation, mis misconception. Misconception, thank you. Misconception. Because, so by looking at those seemingly, people start to think that Nibbana is somewhere to go. Actually, it's not somewhere to go. So when, when we finish this soda, you will find. So we can experience Nibbana, the bliss of Nibbana, right in this present, present life, right? So what I want to say is, Parami the other show. So those seemingly lead to misconception. So we start to think that Nibbana is somewhere, maybe at the, at the heaven, just like a heaven, right? So actually it's not. If you eradicate three type of craving, so you will attain Nibbana. Because those cravings, cravings craving are just like a fire, <coughs> very hot in our mind. We do not think, we do not think they are hot. We always embrace them. <laughs> so actually they are very hot. So if we can remove those fire, our mind becomes very peace and calm. That is Nibbana. Right? So here, Parami, the other show. Janami, the way. The way to the other show. The way to Nibbana. So all these questions are very sophisticated and philosophical. So therefore, Parayana is very famous in ancient time. Because in one occasion, so I think uh, in 2014, we learned this story. The story of Nanda Mata. <coughs> So the Buddha said that as a female devotees, so they have to take the example of Nanda Mata. So actually, I'm, uh, I don't want to elaborate the story of that. So if you want to uh, know about the more about the story, then come to MV Foreign, come in Sunday. <laughs> we will talk about that story. So actually, <coughs> So the Buddha said that Nanda Mata is an example, an ID person to follow as a uh, female devotee. So she was, she was an Agami and she was chanting Parayana Vaga. So by that time, you know, the Vasavana king, one of the, uh, one of the uh, king deva, deva kings, Vasavana, you uh, know, Vasabhai. Then he hear the chanting. Then he stop for a while and he listen. So after the chanting finish, and he say saru saru saru. And he also give information that tomorrow a group of monks headed by Venerable Sariputta will come to your to your town. Then give it dana and share the merit. So he requested. So Nanamada. Nanamada do it, uh, uh, did it as 
he requested, right? So actually, therefore, <coughs> in Pali Kana also, we have so many sotas that the Bora himself are uh, referred to Parayana. So therefore, Parayana is highly respected among the scholars, right? Among the scholars. It's also very, translation is very, very, uh, very difficult, very complicated. <coughs> so when you compare uh, three or uh, two or three books, so you will see different translation because, you know, very complicated, right? <coughs> so here, this one is from Tesa uh, Mithya Mahanawa Bauchan. So the question of Tesa Mithya. Here, you can see Mithya. Actually, <coughs> in Pali Canon, so we have only two places about Arimitya Puja Bodha. One from Digani Kaya, Chakao Disya Nara Soda. So in that soda, at the, at the, at the end of the soda, mentioned about Puja Bodha Arimitya. So the other one is uh, from Bodhavansa, Bodhavansa, it's only one line, only one line. So there's only two places that talk about Fuja Bora and Tiravara Pali Kane. So actually, Sam scholar even said that uh, the name of the Fuja Bora, Mithya, might be taken from Barayana, from here, Desa Mithya. That is what the scholar said, that maybe just for knowledge, right? So, okay, so the Tesa Media is one of the disciples of the Bowery, a uh, respected saint from southern India. He's one of the pupil, right? One of the pupil. And he has said, have been understood both ends. The, the wise one does not stick in the middle. I'm calling a great man, and he has here transcended the seam stress. 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 Huh? Seam stress, right? Seam stress. So, see, what does seam stress mean? The lady, the person, right? The lady, the person who sew the clothes, right? So here also we have different uh, how do you say translation. I will show later. I will show later. So actually, this these ones are very important. Both ends. These are very important. The middle. So therefore, the what middle is taken as say the name of the soda. Middle, right? Middle. I'm calling a great man. He has here transcended the seam stress. So if we do not understand this one, and this one, this one, so we do not understand this soda, right? Therefore, I highlight it. So here, um, <coughs> what is it? I did better, better read the soda first. Uh, in Gautam Nikaya, in Gautam Nikaya, page number, 950 in Kota Nikaya page number oh actually sorry sorry we didn't finish previous soda yet <laughs> sorry 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 we have to finish the uh, previous one sorry sorry <coughs> uh Pate Karada soda from Majima Nikaya <laughs> Okay, let's go back to the finish this time. Uh, paragraph number six, right? Previous soda. Previous soda. All five. Okay, five. start with the five. And how, the fools, does one not require the past? One does not naturally like their thinking. I had such material form in the past. One does not necessarily like them thinking. 
I had such feeling in the past. I had such perception in the past. I had such formations in the past. I had such consciousness in the past. That was how one does not revive the past. And how we lose does one build up hope upon the future? What the church be like that thinking? May I have such material form in the future? What the church be like that thinking? May I have such feeling in the future? May I have such perception in the future? May I have such permissions in the future? May I have such consciousness in the future? That is how one builds up hope upon the future. And how, because, does one not build up hope upon the future? One does not necessarily like that thinking. May I have such material form in the future? One does not necessarily like that thinking. May I have such feeling in the future? May I have such perception in the future? May I have such formations in the future? May I have such consciousness in the future? That is how one does not build up hope upon the future. And how we lose is one thing we should... This one, this one is very important one. Right? Because uh, how we should see uh, phenomena as they, do, as, as they really are, right? So just pay attention to this one. <coughs> yeah. And how we lose is one vanquish in regard to presently arisen states. Here we lose an unthought ordinary person who has no regard for noble ones and is unskilled and undisciplined in their dharma, who has no regard for true men and is unskilled and undisciplined in their dharma, regards material form as self or self as possessed of material form, or material form as in self or self as in material form. He regards feeling as a self, perception okay, as self. Thank you. I think uh, it's talking about five aggregate. Talking about five aggregate. So this is very important. Why we are living, why we should live in the present moment, why we should practice vipassana. So the reason is not to regard our five aggregate as a self. As you know, we normally think that this is my body, this is my country. So we, in our mind, we always think that this is a, how do you say, permanent entity, permanent entity. It is called self. So we regard five aggregate as a self or permanent entity. So we think that it is permanent because we always go back to the past and yearn for the future. We forgot to see right now, right? Right there, right there. So if we see clearly, clearly seeing, we persona, clearly seeing what is happening right now, we see a uh, uh, phenomena of fire aggregate arises, disappear, arises, disappear. That no there is no place for defilement such as craving or hatred or jealousy like this. So if we can extend those moments, that time and space, there is no, uh, no place for defilement, right? So there is no misconception about self or atta. So if we live in the present moment and we see very clearly arising and passing away, arising and passing away, then we do not have the idea of self, right? So that is the purpose of we persona. So therefore, dependent originally, or origination analyze, there is no self, no self, right? No self. And then uh, <coughs> this is uh, the aim of the soda. Then after that, <coughs> Then after that, the Bora, uh, the Bora conclude with the verses. So actually, uh, uh, when we start the soda, all days are summary, and nine days are, uh, how to say, the exposition or analysis. 
we bank, sorry, we bank uh, analysis. So the Bora analyze the vases, what he had said, right? Uh, with the with the pros. Then after that the Bora conclude with the vase. Let not a person revive the past. Who has a singer is the night. So if we are living with the mindfulness, if we are seeing mental and material phenomena in the present moment. So noticing and clearly seeing the arising of those mental and material phenomena and disappearing of them. Then we, we, we do not have a misconception about our fire aggregate. So if we are living in that way, so that will be an auspicious day. <laughs> an auspicious day, right? So, 11, Uncle Leon, 11, 11. So. The last one. So, so it was with reference to this that it was said, Be fools, I shall teach you the summary and exposition of one who has had a single excellent night. Okay. That is what the blessed one said. The Bhikkhu is most satisfied and delighted in the blessed one's words. Okay, do you know the soda? So the message is, we have to stay in the present moment. Not just stay in. So we have to see, we have to try to see. So they are arising and passing away. So that will be Vipassana, right? That will be Vipassana. So if we are staying with the inside wisdom, so that will be an auspicious day. So I wish all of you have the auspicious night today. <laughs> okay, so let's finish our one. Oh. Oh, oh, no. Actually, uh, next, next month, we have two new moon and full moon days. So I decided to close one, one day. So actually, uh, next week is a new moon. A new moon day. So we will, the class will be uh, stay on. So we, yeah, all on, yeah. Please come next week. <laughs> There's uh, one announcement before we want to do the jumping. This coming Monday, the uh, 29th of August, there's a talk on Friday Simha. The, uh, the, the topic of the talk is Effects of the Law of Karma on Our Lives. Same place here, uh, 7.30 to 9.30. Right? All our work okay. Oh.
Oh. Okay, thank you.